Hi everyone, welcome back to Novel Nomad and welcome to my Persephone Books book haul. Um, I actually stayed in a hotel right around the corner from Persephone Books, so that was incredibly dangerous. Um, I went there twice and both times I purchased books to send back and I even got a beautiful tote bag as well. I took that one with me on the suitcase, but um, I also got their beautiful catalogue, which you can buy. It goes through all of the books up to, I believe, oh they got their classics. It goes through the books in order, but 130 that they go up to in their um, catalogue itself. And I thought this was the perfect way to select my next Persephone read, as I am now joined up to their mailing list. And I want to try and get the whole collection, because what Persephone do is that they republish books that have been out of print for a very long time, but that they deem a classic and that should still be read because it's usually books that were published by women. Some books were published by men but predominantly most of their books are published by women um, in the late 1800s going into the 19, uh, 1900s and into the 20th century. Um, so they have a whole range of things from cookbooks, memoirs, histories, literature, poetry, translated fiction as well. I think there's a few French and German authors on the list, but if you are wanting to check out their list, they do have an online website in which you can order, but I definitely recommend their catalogue because it's so packed full of information, photographs, original covers, and their choice of fabric for the publication itself. All right, so let's just quickly go through the books that I picked up. The first one is Far Cry by Emma Smith. Let's have a look at this gorgeous end papers. Just look at those. Look at that. So it's about a young girl who actually uh, moves over to India and it's, it's giving me a little princess vibes but in reverse. So she actually has to, it's about her growing up and living in India and it sounds such a fascinating read. It's um, The author is Emma Smith and this was originally published in 1949. Next we have um, The Young Pretenders by Elizabeth Henrietta Fowler. It's about some young children growing up in 1890s. This was actually published in 1895, so this is a perfect contender for Victober. Um, and it's just quite fascinating because children's fiction was becoming such a foray. There were so many people writing children's fiction during this time, so I think this is just going to be another lovely edition of uh, possible Victober reads for next year. So next we have Operation Heartbreak by Duff uh, Cooper. This was published, I believe, in 1950. So this was published in 1950 and it's a, uh, following the hero of the story was too young to go up and fight in the First World War and now he's too old to fight in regiments in the Second World War. And it's just looking at um, how he always feels like he's on the out and how men are always lauded and asked, oh, so what were you, what were you doing in the war? And um, he could never be part of that group. So it's like that social exclusion for his age. So I think this is going to be a very fascinating story coming from men's view of the home front as well. So next we have They Were Sisters by Dorothy Whipple. Dorothy Whipple is quite a prolific writer and she's quite, um, she's one that's published quite readily by Persephone Books, but this one sounds absolutely fascinating. So you follow three sisters as they have dis different aspirations for marriage and life and um, it follows very, it has very strong themes of domestic violence and it was published in 1943 and so it's really starting to bring to the fore um, how victims are, how victims are trying to survive very intense domestic violence and how their their relationship as sisters um, has to endure through this external force. Um, so I think this is going to be absolutely fascinating read um, and from all reports is quite menacing in the tone and I know Dorothy Ripple writes very intense um, has a very intense way of writing so I just cannot wait to get into this one. So next is another Margaret Oliphant or Mrs Oliphant as she published under and this is The Mystery of Mrs Ben Carey. This was published, um, two novellas she published in 1880 and both of them are in here so potential Victober reads once again um, but this uh, The Mystery of Mrs Ben Carey, the title the novella is actually about um, Mimicking a bit of uh, Queen Victoria, it's about 
the estate owning and quite mysterious Miss ben Mrs. Ben Caro has a very interesting relationship with her steward. So once again mimicking Queen Victoria and John Brown, the Scotsman. So I think this was was a must have been quite a shocking novella to release at the time, but it's going to be a really great October pick. So next we have another Dorothy Ripple. This is called High Wages. Let's just see that beautiful print on the inside. Um, so High Wages is not as menacing as her later works. This was published in 1930 and it's about a young shop girl who works at a drapers, decides that she wants to own her own shop and she opens it in North London just before World War One. And um, it looks, uh, apparently it has a really interesting look on consumer culture and how it was becoming this high craze for department stores and everything that was slowly evolving. Um, after World War One, So it's going to be quite interesting and apparently um, not as confrontational as her other works. So I did buy some of the classic editions, not just the original grey classics, but they had these cheaper classic editions. Um, and this is Marion by Monica Dickens. Um, this, I believe Monica Dickens was the granddaughter of Charles Dickens. I believe. But this was published in 1940 and it really just follows the life of a girl for growing up, experiencing life and love for the first time. And I think it's just going to be one of those wonderful, like, I capture the castle type of reads. So I'm really excited and the cover is stunning, of course. Persephone always do good things. So once again, another Dorothy Ripple book. Um, I took my chance to get as many as I could whilst I was over there. And this is The Priory. The Priory is about two young girls who are growing up with their widower father in a an estate house that's seen better times and um, they're nearly uh, to womanhood as it was. So this one was published in 1939 and the main driving force of this book is that the wid widower father decides that perhaps it's time that he remarried and he remarries a woman who is much younger than himself and so all these little social adjustments start to change in otherwise a very comfortable house. So it was a really fabulous, um, so it sounds like a really fabulous read. Once again, it's huge, um, but I want the cover, inside cover is just stunning and I can't wait to get started on Dorothy Ripple. I know Kate Howe loved her book Someone at a Distance and I think her writing is just going to be very intense. So the first book that they published was William an Englishman by Cecily Hamilton. So this was originally published in 1919 to much acclaim. I think it won a prestigious literary award as well and it is a really interesting look at a World War One experience. So it's not about the woman at home, it's not about the soldier, it is in fact about a young couple who are ripped from their honeymoon into a rather shocking existence and realizing what is happening to Europe and the greater world. So I think this is going to be a very interesting World War One read from what I've read so far but one that I am very interested to read and it's number one. It's the very first book that Persephone Books published on their list so it has to have some historical significance I believe. And lastly from my collection of Persephone um, books is The Interrupted Diaries and Letters of Hetty Hilsom um, from 1941 to 1943. Hetty, like Anne Frank, was growing up in Amsterdam and um, she actually had been to university and these are her diaries of what she witnessed and experienced. She was a woman, an incredibly intelligent woman and um, I believe from all reviews that I've read that it's in fascinating because you have Anne Frank which is a child's experience but then you have this incredibly aware and independent woman who is writing her own experiences on what happened in Amsterdam in those uh, wars and she is a Jewish woman as well so obviously what was happening and how the mind fails to kind of comprehend the violence around her so I think this is going to be incredibly emotionally compelling read but one that I think I might have to be emotionally prepared for as well. So this is the lovely tote bag that I got from Persephone's Books. It is a beautiful really thick tote edition and I think I could easily use this for shopping at all times and of course it's in the lovely Persephone Grey. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll leave links down to the Persephone website down below so if any of these books interest you or you just want to explore their catalogue or even order the catalogue, it's a really good one. Um, 
I will leave that for your perusal and I can't wait to hear all your thoughts if you have read any of these books. So I'll see you next time. Bye!